Hello, I'm Jeff Tudor, the Chief of Police for the San Leandro Police Department. We are about to provide you with information about an officer-involved shooting that occurred on June 11, 2019 at 4.17 p.m. in the city of San Leandro. You're about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to this case, so you may have a better understanding of what occurred based upon what we know right now. The San Leandro Police Department conducts very thorough use of force investigations, which typically require investigators to interview multiple witnesses, view numerous hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. We're still at the initial stages of this investigation, which could take many months to complete, and our understanding of this incident may change as additional evidence is collected, analyzed, and reviewed. We also do not draw any conclusions about whether the officers acted consistent with our policies and the law until all the facts are known and the investigation is complete. A word of caution, the images and information you're about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised especially for young children and sensitive viewers. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Isaac Benabu, Commander of the Criminal Investigation Division for the San Leandro Police Department. On June 11, 2019, at approximately 4.05 p.m., the San Leandro Police Department received a 911 call of a man who was wielding a machete in the middle of the street in the 1900 block of North Boulevard. The caller knew the man as a neighbor and identified him by name, Anthony Gomez. The caller stated that Mr. Gomez appeared intoxicated and was threatening people with a machete. At one point, the caller stated that he observed Mr. Gomez drop his pants and expose his genitals to children in the neighborhood. You will now hear excerpts of the initial 911 emergency call, and you will see cell phone video captured by a witness. Some of the voices have been changed to protect the identity of the witnesses. 911 emergency. I think we have a transfer at North Boulevard for a drunk male exposing himself. He has a machete as well. Okay, go ahead and put him through. Go Hello? ahead, sir. <coughs> Hi, you're at <coughs> North Boulevard. We had a neighbor, he was showing his penis to my young siblings, and he has a machete in his hand. He came over to us. We recorded him too, so we had proof. And he grabbed the machete and he, he hit the tree with the machete and he said he was going to stab us. Okay. All right, and where is he right now? Is he still in front of your house with the machete, or did he uh, he's back? drunk, and he's driving his car up and down the road, and he's going super fast. Now he's up, and he said that the kids threw mustard on his car, so that's why he has a machete, but okay. he just got back, they, they were wrong. Okay, I have an officer who's driving over. I have two of them. What kind of vehicle is he in? Uh, a white Chrysler 300. And he was drunk and he had a machete, and he, I told him I was going to call the cops. He said he, said he was going to kill the cops if they come. He said he doesn't like cops, and he wants to, he said he's a, he's a homeboy, and he wants to, if we call the cops, and he's going to, he's not going to go down without a fight. That's what he said. Okay. But it's wrong, and it's wrong, it's, he's really something wrong. And we're going to come back and when you say he's loading something, does it look like he's loading a firearm? He's loading, loading something. It looks like a, I don't know what it is. I mean, like I said, he had a machete. I don't want to say if it's a gun or not, but he has, he has a machete for sure. He's like, he's like yelling at his mom. I don't know. I don't want to be out of there. I don't feel safe. Okay, then go inside your house. <laughs> He's coming over here. I'm going to have to try to defend myself. Okay, what do you mean he's coming over to your house now? He's walking over here with the machete. I have to defend myself. Okay, I'm telling you that I've got seven officers driving over. Go inside your house and lock the doors. All right, come on, let's go. He turned back around, he turned back around. Tell him to get off here. Let me know, let me know. Okay, go in your house. In your house. Get in the house. I don't know why you're coming over here with a knife to our property. I'm not coming with a knife. What's in your hand? It's okay, I got it recorded. 
Information provided to the officers while en route to the scene was that a male subject was wielding a machete. The subject exposed himself to children and the subject made threats to kill police officers and stated he would not go down without a fight. A nine-year veteran of the San Leandro Police Department was the first officer on scene at 4.11 p.m., six minutes after the receipt of the initial 911 call. The first officer witnessed Mr. Gomez walking in the middle of the street, shirtless and still holding the machete as additional officers arrived on scene. Officers at times using a public address system gave multiple commands to Mr. Gomez to stop and drop the machete. You will now see Axon body camera video from the first officer on scene. Where is he? Do Twenty-four being directed. He's in the middle of north. It looks like he has a machete in his hand walking. Uh, westbound. Martin and Martin and North right now. Mr. Gomez continued to walk away, eventually discarding the machete. Mr. Gomez then walked to the front porch of a home and stayed there even after officers ordered him to come to them. There was an older woman sitting on the porch a short distance from Mr. Gomez. Officers were able to direct her off the porch while continuing to negotiate with Mr. Gomez. Officers discussed a plan to move closer to the house because they did not want Mr. Gomez to enter the home and potentially barricade himself or barricade himself with others in the home. At the time, the officers did not know whether the house was or was not occupied. You will now see the body camera footage of the negotiation. Or you just have his first name. Anthony. Anthony! Anthony! He's right on the other side. Hey, Anthony! Machete through over here somewhere. Hey, Anthony! I need you to step down here to speak with me. It's Officer Oliveira. Anthony, I need you to come down here and speak with me. We're not going to hurt you. We just need to speak with you. Anthony! Anthony! Anthony, I need you to listen to me here. There you go. Thank you. I need you to step down here and speak with me. This doesn't have to be a huge deal. All right? I need you to come down here and talk to me. You're making this into a bigger deal than it has to be. There you go, Anthony. Just step out this way for me, Anthony. Hey, hey, can you goes over there, can we call the mom over? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do we have a shield? And then I think, uh, where's the machete at? Uh, over here. Ma'am, are you able to step down here? So I'm going to get a shield. to not allow yeah. me to go with barricade in the house. Yeah. So let's get the shield first. Right. Yes. So Mike, do you, you want to stay talking to him or yeah. do you want me to start? I'll, cool. I'll stay talking to him. Okay. I've dealt with him the last few days. Okay. And uh, okay. so once we get the shield, I say we move up and try not to let him back in the house. Um, machete he threw over here in the driveway. Okay. Obviously, he may be armed with something else that we don't know, but... Yep. Okay, I'm going to go over... I'm going to switch sides and go over with that Drew Hall. No shield? No shield. Okay. Hey, Anthony! Anthony!
So our, I want to go up and grab mom. Our plan, our, our, our plan with the shield is we're going to go walk closer and go and barricade himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd like to go up there and contain him now. Let's, okay, let's get a plan together. Yeah, that's what. Ted. Hey, Ted. Ted, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All right. Okay, so we have you with less lethal. Yep. You're lethal. You have the dog. Yep. Okay, so once mom gets clear, we're going to move up as. You got it. What do you need? What do you Ma'am, stay there, please. Stay, there. stay back. Stay, I, stay back. I can't. You need to come down here. Hey, Anthony, if you come down here, I'll let you speak to her. I'll let you talk to her if you come down here. Some position where we can respond if he tries to go inside. Yeah, that's what we're planning right now. I just yeah. need at least two people. That's what we're planning right now. Ma'am, stay back. Right. He was walking on Virginia when we got here. Anthony, I need you to come down here and speak with me. Once we get once we free up Mon, then uh, I think we should move up and try yeah, to Yeah, because I don't I do not know if I'm gonna go to the house. Yeah, that's the point. Hey Mon, let's have let's have you get relieved and have you come back over here. Will you just relieve Mon with her? One officer was equipped with an FN three oh three, which is classified as a less lethal control device. An FN-303 is a shoulder-fired, less lethal launcher designed to fire non-penetrating rounds that are specifically designed to break upon impact. Another officer is a canine trained officer whose partner is a police dog specifically trained to assist law enforcement. All other present officers were equipped with their departmental issued firearms and axon tasers. Additionally, SLPD officers receive critical incident and de-escalation training with the goal of resolving incidents peacefully using the least amount of force necessary. Every officer on this call activated their body-worn camera per San Leandro Police Policy. As the officers began moving, Mr. Gomez abruptly stood up and with a dark object in his hand, extended his arms in a shooting stance and pointed that object directly towards the officers. Mr. Gomez then shouted a challenging comment, quote, let's go motherfuckers. In a moment, you'll see body-worn camera footage what you will see and hear in the video is one officer firing one shot, striking Mr. Gomez in the upper body and the canine being deployed. Mr. Gomez collapsed and the item he was holding, which turned out to be a painted two by two dark piece of wood measuring six inches long, fell from his hand to the ground. Officers approached Mr. Gomez and immediately began life-saving measures. However, despite all efforts by law enforcement and paramedics, he was ultimately pronounced dead at the scene. Anthony, put your hands up, Anthony. Anthony, put You up to the car? Anthony, put your hands up, Anthony. Per San Leandro Police Policy, officers involved in this incident were removed from the scene and replaced by detectives and other uninvolved personnel. Investigators from the Alameda County District Attorney's Office also arrived on scene which is routine for any officer-involved shooting. Following our department's protocol, three separate investigations will occur as a result of this incident. These investigations will examine the criminal and administrative components of the case. In addition, the Alameda County District Attorney's Office will conduct an independent investigation into the incident. The investigations will evaluate the officer's tactics and use of deadly force to determine if San Leandro Police Department policies and procedures were followed. These investigations are ongoing because some facts and details are still unknown. 
the San Leandro Police Department policies are available online by visiting www.sanleandro.org and navigating to the Police Department's homepage.